What is going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Now, chances are, if you're watching this, you've already seen at least one of my videos on Bluetooth BLE spam. And if you haven't, I made three whole videos about it. What are you waiting for? Now, initially, it was kind of just a fun joke. You can make stupid little things pop up on people's phones. No big deal, right? Wrong. Because obviously, this is the internet, and we just can't have nice things. Since then, I've seen videos all over the place of people going into Apple stores, crashing all their phones. Sir, how I'm looking at you. Actually, if you haven't joined the Owlsec Discord, Sirho's the leader of it all. He's an absolutely awesome dude, great hacker. It's a fantastic community. Link down below, join now. Well, the whole thing kind of got serious when it came down to the Midwest Fur Fest. Now, say what you want about furries. The ones that I know are super cool, but... Yeah, somebody rolled up in the Midwest Fur Fest, ran some BLE attacks, and according to allegations, there were issues with people's Android devices. Now, I'm not just talking about cell phones, I'm talking about medical devices. Again, this is all allegedly speaking, I wasn't there, I don't know firsthand, but I do know when this happened, they actually reached out to our Discord. Now, fortunately for them, we actually have a ton of super, super talented people just hanging out in the Discord pretty much all the time. Well, Kiyomi and Amelia, actually have already worked on a project called Wall of Flippers that's kind of perfect for this exact situation. Now, up until then, Wall of Flippers was just a project that they made for DEF CON, so when they walked around places, they could log every single flipper that they ran into. Now, this program's already sniffing for, for flippers, so it's also using Bluetooth LE, which is what they're using for these spam attacks. So they can just as easily sniff those out. So I thought it was kind of my responsibility as one of the people that, you know, broadcasted and showed people how to do these BLE attacks, to show the wall of flippers. Not only because it's a really cool project and you know I want to support the community, but at the same time, I want to let people know that we see you. Now, just because you're using a Flipper Zero doesn't mean you're anonymous. And with the availability of tools like Wall of Flippers, it's going to be easier and easier for people to find bad actors. So that being said, don't be a skid and let's get at it. Now, right up top, let me be totally honest with you. I initially wanted to run this on Kali NetHunter, which I've installed on my phone right here. The problem was this is the rootless way of doing it because this phone in particular, which is a leftover phone I have, doesn't have a proper kernel root that allows it to access Bluetooth. I spent a whole night trying to get that to work and then InfoSec Red rolled up and he's like, yo, not gonna happen. So after that, I honestly considered rooting my nothing one phone, but I really didn't want to factory reset it in the process. It's a reasonably new phone, but I still don't want to, you know, completely redo the setup on it just to root it. I probably will down the road just because it's a cool thing to do, but I didn't really have the time to do it this week. Now, while there is a Windows version of Wall of Flippers, it's, you know, definitely a development and process, and it doesn't have the functionality to sniff out Bluetooth attacks. The Windows version shows every flipper around, but it doesn't tell you about the BLE attacks. But one cool thing is that they're actually working on a CTF, which is more or less you're going to see how many flippers you can find and see who can find the most. So what I ended up doing was spinning up a VM of Kali Linux and then installing Wall of Flipper there. So let's hop on over the desktop and I'll show you what it looks like. Now, before we get into all that, let's take a quick second to thank today's sponsor, PCBWay. Now I've spoken about all of the cool things that PCBWay can do for you. However, did you know that they can actually help you design your own PCBs? They have a professional team of expert engineers that will be there to help you through every step of the way. From schematic design to PCB layout, all the way out to rapid prototyping, they can help you with all of it. They can help you design enclosures for your projects as well. And of course, print them for you as well. Do you need software developed? Well, guess what? They've got you covered there too. So check out all of PCB Way's design services linked down below. As always, thank you so much for the continued support PCB Way. You guys are fantastic. Let's get back at it. All right, here is my Kali virtual machine. And one thing I actually have to do, uh, the only way that I can make this work is with a Bluetooth adapter and I have to unplug it and plug it back in. There we go. So I can connect it directly to the virtual machine. This was a issue I ran into the first time trying this because the virtual machine can't easily access my onboard Bluetooth. So it made it a lot more difficult to figure this out the first time. Luckily for me, Kaomi actually hopped into a call with me and we were able to sort it all out. So let's open up our terminal and get Wall of Flippers going. And actually real quick first, I can go over to Kaomi's GitHub 
and give you a little bit of a brief once over on the installation process. It's not really all that hard. So all you really have to do, they're working on the documentation as we speak. More or less, you're just gonna install Git. You're gonna clone the repository like we've done before, but we're using CLI in Linux, so it's a little different, obviously. You know, install Python, and then you install Bloopy and the libglib2.0.dev. All of those are just prerequisites to make everything work, but you know, it's pretty straightforward. So yeah, let's get this out of the way. And we're gonna go to CD Wall of Flippers because I've already done this. And then I think I have to go to, nope, okay, cool. It's just Python 3 and then uh, Wall of Flippers.py. And this should load up. So this is good so far. So before I had Bluetooth working, as soon as I would select option one, it would give me a bunch of errors. Uh, whoops. So of course you have to run the sudo, sudo. So super user on that one. And then um, with Python 3 wall of flippers.py. Here we go. Now I can run it and it's working properly. We had to add this in HCI device. So by default, it wants to use device zero, which is my onboard Bluetooth. However, the Kali machine doesn't access that easily. So I use a Bluetooth adapter, which is gonna be HCI one. That makes everything work and already you can see my flippers. Now it's it's cool because you can see that there's three flippers here. It even shows the color of them. I do have the transparent flipper. Obviously my other ones have aftermarket cases that I made so they're not technically white, but they were white flippers. So right now, since I'm not doing any BLE spam, nothing shows up, but watch what happens when I start an attack. So I'm gonna run the lockup crash for Apple. There we go. And then boom, right there. It says BLE Apple iOS crash long. Very cool. Now we'll notice that the addresses on these things change. So if I change to a different attack, let's go to random action. You'll see right here, it's gonna show a completely different address when we run that. Now that's because when they coded this, the only easy way to make it so that it would actually crash phones, not even crash phones, but make the pop-ups pop up all the time is to make it look like these are different unique devices by changing the MAC address. Now, not everybody has three flippers, but just so you, you know, get an idea of what's going on, I'm going to run attacks on all three of mine starting right now. One, two, and three. Three. Let's see what happens. All of a sudden you see, yeah, 151 advertisements. It's just flooding. We got the iOS crash. We got the uh, the love sense <laughs> distance activation. There's just so many things going on. 200 advertisements. It's just, it goes nuts. There's just so many, so many different attacks going on at the exact same time. I can stop one and then you can see, let's see what else happens here. Cause I'm running the random action. I'm running the Apple action model. And I think they're running basically the same thing. So let's stop this. Hopefully nobody anywhere near me has an Apple phone. And you can see right here on my Apple phone, I've got the pop-ups right here and it just keeps popping up no matter what I do. It's running the um, <laughs> it's running the spam right now, but yeah, just pop up after pop up. I mean, you know how this stuff works. Now what's also really interesting is actually the code for this. So let me pull up Visual Studio Code. Hello, there we go. We already have the wall of flipper code pulled up. So you can see right here is the beginnings of the CTF. Kaomi showed me a brief beta on how this worked. It was actually really cool. What's cool about it is, yeah, you could collect flippers. So the more you'd run into, the more points you got. Also, they could affix special amounts to like transparent flippers or even black flippers that came out for the Kickstarter kids. So we take a quick look at our code here. It's pretty, pretty interesting. So this is the general, just normal wall of flipper stuff. But down here are the forbidden packets. Now, what's interesting about the forbidden packets, scroll down a little bit, is that these blank spaces, these underscores, are actually where the data is randomized for each attack. Initially, one of the tricky parts to figuring this all out was figuring out which parts of this data were static and which parts of the data were just randomized. So you have to account for the static data as well as the randomized data. And that's really the only way to get real positives on these things. So trying to figure this all out was not particularly simple. What's also cool is that in the flipper code itself or in the wall of flipper code itself, there are little random letters and stuff. So this right here, will change based on what's going on. And there's some, you know, random coded in uh, little phrases. And that's pretty cool. Don't be a skid. And it's got the Discord in there too, which is cool. But yeah, as we scroll down through here, we can see kind of how everything works. And it shows all the different devices and pairings like that. And that's the way that the actual wall of flippers is able to detect these attacks. So that's the Wall of Flipper project by Kaomi and Amelia. Now this project is still in its infancy and you know, there's a lot of work to be done still. 
That's where I'm reaching out to you. Are you a Windows or a mobile device dev? If you are, can you help port Walla Flipper over to whatever platform you like to use? There are also already apps like NRF Sniffer by Nordic Semiconductors that can kind of do pretty similar to what Walla Flippers can. However, there's definitely work to be done to make it a little bit easier to, you know, actually do the sniffing and stuff. So a standalone app would be way better. Obviously, I always love reaching out to the community for help on these projects because honestly, they never seem to disappoint. So if you want to get involved, comment down below and we'll hook you up with the right people. All right, you guys are the greatest. We'll catch you next time.